plugs-in mesh machine or partial meshes, that can be quickly integrated into the surface of a model. It's helpful to understand, that mesh machine achieves this not via booleans, but via what I call, face replacement. This has a number of advantages, but also limitations. For instance, you can't use a plug to punch through an object, as you can do with a boolean. Plugs only affect a limited area on one surface, on one side of a model. Also, plugs going across a hard surface break, are generally not a good idea. Where plugs excel, is on curved surfaces, where a degree of deformation is required. In combination with normal transfers, plugs can create flawless detailing on curved surfaces, which is otherwise hard or impossible to do. Now, let's get started with adding our first plug to a cube. Place the cursor roughly where you want to insert a plug. Bring up the Mesh Machine menu and choose the Plug Libraries sub-menu. Press the button below a library to insert its currently active plug into the scene. Scale, position and rotate the plug. Snap settings have been set up automatically. Hold down the control key while transforming the plug, to utilize surface snapping. To plug, shift select the target object, making it active, and choose plug from the mesh machine menu. For this cube it's a good idea to turn on auto smoothing. As you can see, the plug is fully integrated now. I have selected what I call, the perimeter loop here. Every plug should have one. It's useful if you want to change the plug's fillet. It's also helpful for certain selections. Let's add another plug. This doesn't look too good, but it's expected. If you are working on big or long polygons or if you ever see overlapping faces like this, turn on the Contain feature. Contain comes at a 30% performance cost, which is why it's optional. This sphere is pretty dense. As a result, what can happen is, not all of its faces get replaced. Especially if Contain is off. When it happens, just increase the precision value. With a contrast in mesh density like this, you may also have to clean up some surrounding verts. If you regularly run into issues like this, it would be a good idea to create higher density plugs in the first place. With contain disabled, the dissolve angle property is available. It can be used to remove surrounding edges. The lower the resolution of the target object is, the higher the value needs to be to have an effect. For each plug, a vertex group is created, marking the geometry, that can be normal transferred to get rid of shading issues. A normal transfer can be done automatically by the plug tool as well. Like the contain feature, this adds an additional 20 to 30% overhead to the plug tool. In a real world scenario, you probably want to leave it off, and do the normal transfers as a separate step at the end of the modeling process. Extruded plugs are no different than ones embedded into a surface by the way. The plug tool allows you to tweak the perimeter loop by changing the offset value. For convenience, you can also fine-tune the rotation. The perimeter loop gives you some space and establishes clean topology, should you want to modify the fillet at the base of a plug. There are two basic types of plugs, fillet plugs, marked with a white radius, and edge plugs, marked with a red angle. The difference is the way the plugs transition into the surface, either with a fillet, or with a sharp edge. Fillet plugs will always deform with the surface, it's the only way to maintain the fillet. This can lead to undesired deformation, like in the case of this circular plug on a cylindrical model. With edge plugs, only the hard edge at the base conforms to the surface. The rest of the plug does not deform. If you turn on plug deformation for an edge plug, it will behave the same as a fillet plug. It still retains its hard edge however. Fillets can then be built on the mesh level, or created with a bevel mod, or even faked with a bevel shader.
if you are working on flat geometry, deformation can actually be turned off completely, which will improve the tool's performance a bit. On curved geometry, it should always be enabled of course. This plug here, is a subset plug, meaning it comes with a secondary and separate object. With subsets, you have the option to also deform them. Subsets will also be parented automatically to your current object. If you notice, some plugs are also marked with a small D in the bottom right corner, either in black or white. This indicates the presence of a deformer, which is a hidden object, used for an alternative, slower deformation approach, that generally produces better results. For this plug, deformer usage is enabled by default, represented by the white D in the icon. If you disable deformer usage, you can see some undesired distortion occurring. If your plug is deformed and you choose to not deform the subset, you will often need to transform the subset slightly so it fits again. In this case for instance, deforming the subset means, it's no longer perfectly cylindrical, which is something you may want to keep. This plug is also marked with a white D, indicating that deformer usage is enabled. Disabling the deformer here, leads to heavy, unacceptable distortion. If you look at this plug from earlier, you can also notice some distortion here. If I try to recreate this situation with a similar plug, that has a deformer, you can see how this could have been avoided or at least minimized. A curved mesh build with relative low resolution, will emphasize problems like these. So, it's always a good idea to supply a deformer for your plugs, if you create them. Also, compare this one from earlier, when it's plugged again with a deformer. Finally, plugs don't have to be static. There are ways to set up plugs and modify them, to allow for interactive adjustments before plugging. These types of plugs are marked with a blue icon in the top left corner. This hook plug can be pulled apart on both sides. To keep the origin centered, it's a good idea to adjust both sides equally. Hook plugs do not add any new geometry. And so, keep in mind, that lengthening them too much will affect their ability to deform. Unlike hook plugs, array plugs do add new geometry and so are a bit more versatile. They do have a minimum length of one center piece however. This means you can't really do circular plugs and use arrays to stretch them out. This plug is interesting because it has underhangs. Essentially a subsurface understructure. This is just an example, but it could be more complex and could be filled with subsets. Also, if you ever use a deformer, but notice that the deformation isn't happening, you need to increase the precision value in the deformation box. I'm forcing it here by decreasing the value first, but you get the idea. To conclude, here is a plug with five subsets. The interesting part is, that it's been prepared in a way, that some subsets always deform. The bolts in the corners deform, even when subset deformation is disabled, to ensure they stay in their sockets.
as a result of the deformation, their origins become misaligned. That's unavoidable unfortunately, unless you don't force deform them, when creating the plug. 